The first thing you want to do when you start your recording project for Mixdown is open Logic Pro. Be sure you are selecting a new project, that you are selecting a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Then simply select Choose. Another window will come up prompting you what type of recording. Choose audio. Choose input 1 and 2 to create stereo tracks. And choose to create four tracks. These four tracks will give us enough tracks for our three different microphone techniques as well as our reference track. We still need to double check to make sure our sampling rate and our bit depth are set. We go into our auto audio settings, make sure 48 kilohertz is chosen. Then we go to our recording settings, check the recording preferences, and make sure that 24-bit recording is selected. Next we go to Command Tab and go to the Finder. And once in the Finder, we will be wanting to find out where our tracks are located. And when we go and find the folder that we've saved our recorded tracks in, we open that up. And then we notice we've got a left and right bloom line. We only want to grab the left one, dot L dot wave, and just drag that over. And that will interleave that file with the right side and formulate the stereo track of the bloom line mic technique that we used. The next thing then is we go through and get the rest of our, our recorded tracks. Again, only dragging the left dot L dot wave. This time I grab the room one. I actually want that in the third track. So I bring it down, drop it in, then push command tab, get back to the finder. And then I go down and grab my XY configuration. Again, the dot L dot wave, drag that in, drop it in, track two. And then finally I grab my reference track, which is Catching Shadows, and it's already a stereo file, so you just grab that and drop it in the final channel 4, and then you have all of your tracks lined up. Once you have set up your tracks, it's time to audition them to find what the best full take is that you've recorded. You can select each track individually. <clears throat> if you want, you can solo all the tracks at once, which you probably would not want to do. So don't click that S solo button at the top, but choose the track that you want to solo by choosing its individual solo button and you will only be listening to that track. Right now we have the Bloom Line tracks, so we're going to audition the whole recording and find out which is the best full take. And then the next thing from there, after we've listened through to that and we've made up our mind how we feel about that, is we go on to the next one, which is the XY configuration. We solo that, no need to mute the 
top track because you're soloing one track anyway. And then we start playing that and auditioning that. What we're trying to decide is which one do we like better, the bloom line or the XY? Then we can audition the room mics and see what character those room mics gave us with their Omni settings. And we audition those. Then finally, whenever we want to listen to our reference track, which we'll use later when we're finalizing our recording, we um, can go back to the beginning and solo that track, and we can simply listen to that track alone. At this point of the process, I've decided I like the Bloom Line take the best. And so I want to use that mic setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another track. And this is where I will be putting my composite edits for the final edit. And I need to create two of these tracks so that I can drop the bloom line take of it into one of those tracks and I can also drop the room mics which I will all also be using in my edits. So what I do is I find the end of the first take and then I find the space to place the playhead, select the track that I'm wanting to split and then I go up to Edit, and I go to Split at the Playhead. And now I have my first copy of my first take. And all I have to do is just drag that down to my new audio track that I set up. And then I do the same thing, finding the end of the recording. And I set the playhead where I had it before. I choose the room mic track. I go up to edit. And then I will split that at the playhead. And then go back to the beginning and take that and drag that down into my second new track that I set up. And then I just rename these tracks. And I'm naming this Bloom Line Composite Edit. This is where I will be placing the, the good takes from what we have left up above into here, and then Room Composite Edit. And this is where my final edit will end up. Now it's time for your edits, and since I'm just using Bloom Line and Room, I move the Room up right underneath Bloom Line because I'm not using the XY configuration. And now I'm finding the spot that I want to splice in to the piece so that I can make my edits. And this is the spot right here, right in this gap. This is what I'm wanting to grab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen the track so I can see more space and get the playhead right up near where the beginning of that waveform starts out of that silence. Now I select both tracks. I've got both of those regions selected and now I can go to edit and I'm splitting at the playhead. 
and then I can take these two tracks, drag them down to my composite tracks, and then I will drag them all the way over to the left. I'm going to make it very small, my window, so I don't have to drag forever and ever and ever. It got me that close to it that way. And then I go and find the exact spot that I want to get rid of and put the better take into. So I'm listening and listening. And I'm finding out where that spot is. And I've found that I there was a particular spot where I wanted to, to put it because it began very nicely. So instead of putting it in at the silence, I'm going to find that exact spot on the good take. And then what I will do is split the regions at that spot where I want to put that into the, the main track. Once I find that spot, I stop the playhead at that spot and then go to the end of this take one, select both of them by shift and clicking them. Then I'm going to just drag the ends of those all the way up to the playhead because the playhead is stuck right there and it will stop right on that playhead. I let go, and then I can go back and grab the take that I wanted and drag that into place and butt it right up to the end of my full composite track. And then I audition it and play it to see if everything works out just right listening for noise as it plays through that. And I can make things bigger again so that I can see the waveforms really, really clearly. And I may do fine little adjustments on it to get it exactly where I want it. It was starting a little bit late and the timing wasn't working out quite right. So on both ends, I find where that transient was and then move, tuck it just ahead of that transient. Then I move this in. And then I can hit play, audition it again, play it through. And then I end up grabbing uh, the fader tool and I highlight my tracks on all front ends and, and tail ends. And then with my fader tool, I can draw a fade between both of those and just put a crossfade in. Then by holding that tool again, I can nudge the ends of the crossfade because they were sort of crossing over the transient and making it sort of fade out when it was playing back. And then I get it so that it is a nice, smooth transition. Once my edits are all finished, I go in and delete the tracks that I don't need so that I'm left with my composite track and the reference track. I open up the mixer and I start mixing my project. Notice that I have my reference tracks and I have my Bloomline and XY tracks. I'm going to rename my reference track and call it reference track so I'm not confused at my mixing board.
Now notice that my tracks are going out the stereo out channel, which comes out this bright pink channel. I'm going to change that. I'm going to send that out a bus. And the bus is like an auxiliary channel. So it's going out to bus one, both of these marimba tracks that we had, the room and the bloom line, out aux one to bus one. Okay, the bus one is an auxiliary channel. So it's going out bus one, which comes to stereo out and goes out stereo out. So I'm going to name this marimba sum. Then I pull up an equalizer. This is where we try to match our mix between our two sets of mics with the reference track. And we have an analyzer. So as my audio is playing, it is analyzing the signal at whatever frequency levels are happening at any given time. So what I do is I also want to set my panning to the stereo pan in case I want to make any narrowing of the stereo width, which I didn't end up doing. Then I'm soloing the reference track and I put an equalizer on the reference track. I'm not changing anything in it. I just want to look at its frequency analysis and compare it to mine. There's some little mid-range areas that are a little bit lower in mine. So I want to find those at that spot and raise it up a little bit. So I'm rearranging the window so I can get a good look at what's going on. You notice there's some low frequency things happening uh, in the reference track. So I low, raise the low end. I've got some things in these upper mid-range area that is creating a little bit of attack. So I wanted to lower that a little bit. Then I reference it, listen to mine, listen to it. And now I'm getting ready to finalize my track. So I put a gain on my auxiliary channel, the marimba sum, and I get that gain raised up without it peaking out. And it helps me match that a little bit with my reference track. And then on the stereo out, I'm going to put a processor that's called a limiter. <clears throat> what that creates is a very, very hard ceiling that doesn't allow anything to get past. And it gave me actually a little preset for chamber music. So I, I chose that. But the output level I'm bringing to minus one. I'm setting my ceiling at minus one. That's one decibel below zero in digital world, the digital world. So there's, I don't want to get that digital distortion. And then I raise my gain and I keep watching the center graph on this. You see a little blue specks going down. That's showing me my gain reduction whenever it's going to go up past minus one. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping in that in that general vicinity. And then I decided, you know, I still need something a little more ambient. So I decided to add some reverb. So I chose an, another bus channel um, and sent that out 
to a bus, an auxiliary channel, and added a reverb to that. I chose a hall reverb. And the main thing to know about this reverb that I chose is the size of the room. So I'm playing it and listening to the reverb, and I decided I wanted a little bit bigger room, which basically gives me a little longer tail on the reverb. And then um, I mix that to my taste. And I'm continually watching the meters on the stereo out to make sure nothing is getting past zero and I'm in good shape. The limiter is doing its job. So now I've come up with something that I really like. So I miniaturize my window and I draw a loop function which is going to basically tell it when to stop bouncing the track so it doesn't go further than the actual track. And I'm now going to bounce my two tracks. I mute the reference track and I choose then AIFF 24 bit 48 kilohertz and then I choose a folder to bounce it to on my computer and then I start bouncing. I also checked to add it to my um, to my project here and if I go to the media window which is the upper right button you push that upper right corner pulls up all your audio tracks that you have in in the project and I see my chamber marimba and I can drag that in to the window so that I can edit the front and the tails of this file so that it's all ready to go. So what I do is I increase the window um, and make the window wider so that I can really see that front end and then I move my playhead right to where I want the playhead to be for when I want the actual track to start. And I click the playhead and get it in a good spot. I split the file at the playhead and get rid of that front end. And then I'm making it bigger so I can see that bit of silence before things start and I put a little crossfade in there and I can move the top of that so that it will kind of fade in to the beginning of my tracks. So it's coming from no sound at all right into the track. I audition it to make sure I like it and then I go to the very tail end and find where the last note hits and where I start to finally hear it sort of fade away. And it's going, it's going right about there. It fades away. So I just nudge the end of my track up to where the playhead was, and then I add another crossfade, but it's only actually becoming a fade out because there was no region to crossfade into and I can change the curve of that and I get a little crossfade going I give it a little bit of a listen and it, it's exactly what I like fading it down to nothing so I come back to the beginning drag this to the very very beginning and I'm going to bounce this one more time And same thing as before, I choose its destination. And I'm keeping it at 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. That's what iTunes likes to get. So I'm going to keep it that way for streaming. I name it, pick a folder, and then I bounce it. And it 
goes all the way through. It bounces it, processes it, and then as soon as that little blue line stops, you know you're all done, and you have your final mix.